Hey everyone, welcome back to part nine of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. So in this video, I'm going to focus on adding some compression and dynamics to the drum aux tracks. We'll also add some bus compression to the entire drum kit, and we'll also add a little bit of saturation in two different ways. We can add saturation from Logic's compressor. We can also add saturation using the new Chroma Glow plugin, which was released with Logic 11. However, one thing I didn't do in the last video that I should have done was I should have played you the rhythm guitars and bass with the drums just so you can hear what they sound like. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, so pretty good, but the kick snares and toms, uh, there's no toms in that example, but the kick snares and toms, I'd like to kind of give them a little more of a round sound, and I may also want to try to control some of the dynamics and the overheads a bit, uh, maybe even the rooms as well. So let's just start with the kick drum. So I'm going to pull up the compressor on here. And the compressor circuit that I like to use for drums in Logic is either the Studio FET or the Vintage FET. I'm going to use the Studio FET for this. One of the things I always do when I work with Logic's compressor is I turn off the auto gain. And if I really want to saturate an instrument, I'll add in a little bit of soft distortion. It really takes the compressor from just controlling the dynamics to changing the tone of the instrument a bit. So with drums, especially the close mics, we want to pull out the attack time a little bit because we want the transient to come through. We're mainly going to be compressing like the body and the tail of each of the drum hits. You can also adjust the input gain and output gain of the compressor, and that soft distortion is adding a little extra gain to my signal, so I'm going to dial that back on the output. So maybe a little bit more thwack, a little bit more roundness to that, but a fairly minor change. Let's go over to the snare drum. I think we'll really be able to hear this on the snare. So once again, I'm going to go to the Studio FET, pull out the auto gain, turn off auto release, put this on soft distortion, and we'll go from there. You don't want too long of a release because that means it'll take longer for the signal to come back to its original level. See how slow the meter is moving? And you also don't want a super fast release either. Because that's not going to compress the tail of that instrument enough. So I can kind of find a spot in between that works. Pull back the output gain to compensate for the added volume that the distortion unit is adding. Now, I like the pop and the punch that I'm getting from that, but it's maybe a little too much. So what I can do is I can use the mix blend here to blend between the output signal and the input signal. Essentially, all the way to the right is fully compressed, fully processed. All the way to the left is completely unprocessed. So you can apply parallel compression this way and blend in a bit of the original dry signal with the wet signal.
Yeah, a little more thwack on that. Now, the toms, um, this is a situation where I may want to add compression to each of the tom channels individually. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's find a spot where all of the toms are being used, like right here. So let's just solo the tom aux, and let's add the compressor to each of the toms. Once again, going to use the Studio FET for this. I'll go ahead and bring in the soft distortion for some saturation, and I'm going to pull back the mix blend quite a bit just so we can hear more of the natural body and tone of the toms. Let's go ahead and open up the attack time. You can probably get away with a little slower release on uh, the toms as well to get rid of the ring. Each tom hit sounds a little bit more uniform now, but I don't want that at 100%, so let's dial that back just a little bit. Okay, and let's copy that setting over to the other two tom tracks. So here's without the compressors. Yeah, very subtle, but with the uh, the floor tom, I think I'm going to try a, a different distortion unit. With it off, like there's like a little click in the, the floor tom that I'm not liking. And I think if I use soft or hard distortion, that's just going to make that click even more obvious. Let's try the clip distortion instead on this one. Ah, I think that works. And then for the floor tom, I, I think I'm going to roll up the release a bit more to control the ring a little bit. Yeah. There we go. And then overheads. Really, the main thing with the overheads is I just want the peaks, the, the, the transients of the symbols to kind of be tamed a little bit. So let's go ahead and throw the compressor on the overheads. For overheads, I'll typically use one of the VCA circuits or the Opto circuit. Let's try the Studio VCA for this. Not looking for a whole lot of compression here. Also not looking to saturate the cymbals any more than they already are. Yeah, and so when your input signal is really low like this, you can add some input gain because you're, you're seeing that the meter is almost not moving, even with the ratio set to 5 to 1 and the threshold at negative 19, we're not getting much gain reduction. So what you can do is pull up the input gain so that the signal level is a little healthier coming into the compressor, and then we can attenuate it on the output to match the input gain. <laughs> Just use a little bit of uh, blend there, a little bit of mix blend. And then let's go over to the rooms. Now, the room track, I'm really going to like crush the room track with a ton of compression. In fact, for this, let's use the Vintage Opto, turn off auto gain. And I'm really going to use some really heavy compression on this. Uh, once again, the signal level is pretty low, so I may want to pull this up and then attenuate later. You can also just pull up the individual tracks here and then attenuate the channels later. It's completely up to you. We just want a healthy enough signal level coming into the compressor, though.
So we got a little more density on the room mics now. So let's hear all of the drums. Just dialed back the uh, snare compression a bit more there. It was sounding a little too controlled, if anything. Okay, so let's A-B all of the drums with and without the EQs and compressors. In fact, I need to grab the toms as well over there. Yeah, so this is just, you know, proof that sometimes individual effects are only making like a 5 or 10% difference to the tone or the dynamics of a particular track. But the cumulative effect of all of the plugins that you have on those tracks can be very noticeable. And here the drums are have a lot more pop, a lot more punch, and everything just kind of seems uh, more open but also more isolated at the same time. Let's go to the main drum bus. And there's two things we can add here, uh, two things I might add here. One might be a level of saturation on the entire drum bus, just to kind of beef it up a bit. It, depending on what version of Logic you are using and what your computer is, you may or may not have the Chroma Glow plugin. This is uh, Logic's new uh, saturation plugin. And when I use this on drums, I prefer to use the magnetic or squeeze models. So let's go with the squeeze model. And then the most important controls here are the amount of squeeze, obviously, the filter for the squeeze, because in a lot of cases, you may not want the saturation to be applied to the base. So pulling in this filter allows everything below this frequency to be left out of the processing. And then the mix blend, this is how much of the effect you're actually going to hear. So I like to dial in a setting that sounds maybe a little too, like a little too much, but then what I'll do is dial back the squeeze and then blend in how much I want with the mix blend. You can see that's a very obvious effect. Adds a lot of thwack and a lot of saturation, so we may not necessarily want all of that in there. So let's dial back the mix a lot. Like, I just want a little bit of that effect blended in. may even need to dial back the overheads and rooms a bit at this point and maybe even the uh the close mic buses let's hear what that sounds like with the guitars and bass in Might dial back the mix blend on pretty much all of these just a little bit more just so that the compression is a little bit more of a softer effect because we're almost getting a, like a natural compression from the chroma glow plugin which i'm also going to dial back a little bit more as well 
It's just a, a little bit too much. And then if you want to control the dynamics um, for the entire drum kit, you can add a layer of bus compression on here as well. The compressor I typically use for bus compression is the Vintage VCA, which is like a, an SSL style compressor. And really all I'm looking for here is just a, a little bit, maybe one or two dB of compression. You can also try like the parallel drum bus compression trick where you have kind of like a shorter attack, a lot of compression. And so that leaves like a really short transient on each drum hit, but then you blend it way back where you're hearing more of the dry signal and just a little bit of the extra punch you've added. But it might be helpful to pull Chroma Glow after the compressor here. You'll get two different sounds. Another thing that the Chroma Glow plugin is doing to the snare drum is it's making it really bright. So let's maybe bring up some of the mid range and bottom end on the snare just to kind of fatten it up again. Over to another section over here. Yeah, and it's not uncommon to need to go back into your other tracks and readjust your EQs after you've added compression. But I think right now we've got a pretty good uh, drum tone. We still need to add a reverb to it. I want to do some other things to it to really thicken up the snares and toms, but that's where we'll leave it for right now. In the next video, we will move on to dialing in the bass guitar tones and the rhythm guitar tones. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.